Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to Scrap Timber, which is our marathon in September every single year. And while normally I scrap every single day in September, this year my lovely friend Christy from Christy's Beautiful Life has agreed to split it with me because I'm in college and raising five kids by myself. And imagine that, I don't have the kind of time that I used to have. So we're doing every other day here on this channel, but there's a number of ladies who are jumping in and getting involved, and I will have their links and a playlist down below so you can go check out all of their videos every single day following our prompts. So today's prompt for the 2nd of September was black and white. And so I decided to interpret that as a black and white photo. So that is what we're scrapping today. Now I am using the stash kit that I put together in August and I knew right away that I wanted to use this beautiful rainbow paper. Now this entire collection uh, or mix of collections is by Amy Tangerine, who was a designer. She still is a designer, but she doesn't work for American Crafts anymore. And so we don't really get to see scrapbooking stuff from her much, but I loved her collections. They were bright, they were bold, they were beautiful. And if I wasn't sure about some of the themes and the embellishments like tigers, things like that, typically the papers were right up my alley. Love the color schemes that she used. And if I didn't love the, the front side, I almost always loved the back. And so it was very, very nice to have a bit of her stuff in the collection and in the stash as well and so I decided to go ahead and do a full stash kit using a mix of her collections that I have had stored away and had hardly touched. <laughs> the hoarding is real. <laughs> I am convinced that buying scrapbooking supplies and using scrapbooking supplies are two very different hobbies. A lot like buying books and reading books are two very different hobbies. I'm convinced this is also true in scrapbooking. Now, what I decided to do in this layout was keep it fairly simple, but go with a scattered design. Now, if you are unfamiliar with my go-to design series, I will go ahead and link that for you at the very end of the video. It'll pop up as a video option to go ahead and click on and watch and it's a playlist of simple designs you can create backgrounds with and it gives you a bit of a jumping off point that allows you to explore a little bit in your creativity and try new things but they're all very simple designs so none of them are super mixed meteory none of them are super crazy hard to do or complicated in any way and this one is what I would refer to as scattered so it's a lot of little pieces that add up to the background. So in this case, we're using butterflies. Now, as you may have seen, I pulled these butterflies from a bowl on my desk and they were left over from a cocoa vanilla collection that I had fussy cut in a stash kit. So I had a whole page of these beautiful butterflies from cocoa vanilla paper and I didn't want to put them into my cocoa vanilla stash because I actually have another whole paper of these fussy cut in my stash with the collection. And so instead, I opted to put them onto into a bowl on my desk and that way I could just reach for them if I needed a butterfly. And so when I saw them sitting here and realized that the colors matched almost perfectly to this paper, I decided to go ahead and get them out and give them a go, put them on a page, get them used. And so a couple of things that are on this page are like that from my bowls on my desk. And I do try to incorporate those things. Mostly the bowls on my desk have leftovers from kits, things like fussy cut butterflies, things like one leftover tag. I'm not going to go and put that away with a whole collection probably if it's one piece. I'll just tuck it into the bowl on my desk and hope that I can get it used. And most of the time I do. I'll just reach, I'll say, oh, hey, I know I have this in that bowl. And why I can remember what's in those bowls, I have no idea, but I can. They're kind of imprinted in my brain, the inventory of my desk. And perhaps it's because I sit there so often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just used to looking at it or maybe I've rifled through that bowl recently and it gets kind of stuck in my brain right oh I saw that in there and that works out really really well when I need just one more thing to add to a layout I grab those bowls and typically I can find something in there that will work 
Now, for this particular photo, this is of Olivia, which is one of my twins, and her teacher, Miss Ford. And this was her teacher for second grade for the last two years, because she's in the special needs class. And so she had the same teacher for the last two years, and we absolutely adore her. She is an amazing teacher both compassionate and kind and understanding and patient and also challenges Olivia when she needs it, which is a fantastic combination really in a teacher and something that isn't as common as you might think. Uh, in our experience, sometimes we find that teachers are very kind and compassionate, but they don't really challenge our girls. And if our girls are not challenged, they will not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a lot of internal motivation. No idea where that comes from. And they just absolutely choose not to do anything if given the option. And this way, having a teacher that challenges them is very helpful and it motivates them to push themselves to higher expectations, to meet expectations. And I love that. I love that. It has to be moderated, of course. We have to make sure expectations fit the child, but I do think it's really helpful to have a teacher that does challenge your child to meet those expectations. Uh, in addition to that, Miss Ford has been very, very helpful and understanding in uh, our path and journey at home as well. And we've really, really appreciated her uh, helpfulness and just reaching out, offering to watch the girls, things like that. She's been really, really sweet. So now I'm looking at my title. I've gotten those two rubber words. Those are again from Amy Tangerine. And I wanted to use, I want to make sure that I'm using some of these embellishments early on in the kit, because if they get stuck to the end, it's kind of hard to use a lot of them at once. And so I, I'm trying to make a concerted effort with this kit to reach for those types of embellishments, like rubber words that maybe aren't my first choice and use them early on. That way, when I get to the end of the kit, I may only have one left, and that's a lot easier to use up than the whole pack. Another thing you'll see me use later is the little puffy stickers. Same thing. I'm going to try to get those onto as many of the early pages as possible so that I don't have a ton left over at the end, and I can try to use them up. The purpose of these stash kits is to use up the things, is to get these beautiful embellishments, beautiful papers, onto layouts and into your albums and not have them sitting in your stash accomplishing nothing. <laughs> Just sitting. They're not doing anybody any good sitting in your stash. And I promise you, there will always be more pretty things to buy. I have never, ever in my life had a thought that there was just nothing available at the moment that I wanted to buy. Never have I had that thought. <laughs> There's been, well, my favorite brands aren't coming out with collections right now, sure. But never have I sat there and said, there is nothing on the market that I would like to buy. So I am pretty sure I can make the claim that there will always be pretty things to choose from. And so I should enjoy my stash and use it now. Also, there is a, a little thought process here in that you want to use your things while you're in love with them because your style will change over time. And the last thing you want is to have old stash that you're no longer interested in and nothing new to play with or, or no justification to buy new stuff because you already have so much old stuff. That's another little thought process as well. Now I've added some more butterflies to this scattered background and I'm gonna bring in some little wood veneer butterflies to add in as well. Now I did try some little fussy cut butterflies that were from Freckled Fawn uh, paper that I, I was on their design team earlier this year and they had a paper full of tiny butterflies and I did try some of those. I got one on the page and decided, nope, I needed some wood veneer. And so I pulled out these teeny tiny little butterflies that I'm pretty sure came from Citrus Twist, maybe, not sure. But I have a lot of wood veneer in my stash. I went through a wood veneer phase. I don't know if y'all have done this. Let me know if you've done this. Is there something, a certain embellishment that you had an obsession with? Is it flair? Is it wood veneer? Is it enamel dots? I've heard a lot of people have an enamel dot addiction. <laughs> 
I had a wood veneer addiction, and so I have a lot of wood veneer. And I am a bit on a mission to go ahead and get it used, get on the page, and little bitty bits like this were my favorites. Luckily, most of what I wanted was tiny pieces, and so those are a little easier to use. I am going to go ahead and glue down my butterflies, but I'm just gluing down the center of the butterflies so that the wings still pop up just a little bit. That adds the appearance of dimension without adding a lot of bulk to your layout. Now. What I had in my head when I started this layout was that I really wanted to do some black butterfly trails here at the bottom. I thought this would be really fun. So what I was imagining was something like a bundle of balloons that have all the little strings like kind of coming down and connecting underneath of them. And I had that idea, but with butterflies and the little butterfly trails behind them. And I think we got there in the end. I think we more or less got that effect with the Nouveau Drops. And I was really excited to see that come to fruition. I think it came out really, really cute. So now that I have my little butterfly trails in place, I did decide to go ahead and grab those puppy stickers like I was saying to go ahead and get at least one on the layout. Uh, as you can see, there's a giant pack of them here, so I may not use all of them up in this kit. We'll have to wait and see. I do decide to use this one little camera here. I tried to use a, I think it was a donut. Yes, I wanted to use a donut on the tag, and for some reason, it just wasn't appealing to me. I felt like I needed some metal, and I went with the silver on these little enamel dots from Citrus Twist, and I'm just trying to use these up. Again, this is another thing I have on my desk, partial containers of things, partial packets that I really want to use up, I will leave out on my desk, and that makes it much easier for me to see them and grab for them when moments like this strike. Now, because I decided to go with silver, I'm not going to be using Heidi Swap Color Shine on this one. We're going to be splattering with some watercolor instead. Now, I did feel like the top of the photo needed a little bit of love. I needed to balance out the little added title at the bottom with something here at the top. And so I went ahead and added a cut apart piece and made a tab. I will go ahead and write on that with some journaling as to who this lady is in the picture so that I will know for the future. Then I'm grabbing out my Prima metallic watercolors, which I adore. And the black, if you splatter very lightly, dries silver. It is beautiful, and I honestly, it's my favorite silver splatter that I have found to date. I don't have to shake anything up. It works perfectly every time. So now that everything is dry, I've decided to come back and add a little sketchy border, and it's, it's sort of sketchy. It's sketchy in that I draw little fake uh, stitching lines on it just to make it a bit more textural and fun, and it, while it's not super noticeable here on camera, in person it looks very cool and adds a nice little defining structure to the background, and with a scattered layout I do this quite often. Now that this one is done, be sure to check out the links in the description box below for all of the wonderful people joining us, and until next time, bye y'all!